Okay. Everyone should get a quiz, and everyone should have homework to submit. To submit this homework and quiz together at the end, uh, I will be over here on the podium. You come here, you put it here. Good, and then you can go at the end of the class. All right, both homework and the quiz. Good? All right, today we're going to finish up what we have last time, okay, about detail of manifest flow, and then we will talk quite a bit more about exam, and then he transfer your new quiz, okay? For, I know that you will have several questions about exam, content of exam, blah, 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 blah. Keep your question, okay? Don't ask it yet. Let's finish what we have last time, okay? Are you ready? Okay. Last time we talked about um, detail of slab flow. Okay, detail slab flow. This is a solution. So last time we have this kind of problem, we try to find out what will be the location of this solid particle. The point of this exercise or quiz that we have together is you know how slug flow works and you know that anything that is inside the slug body moves slower. So if you have some sand particle and you think, hey, if we have slug flow, it will scoop it and sweep everything, it will be clean. No, it won't. Okay. If you have some sand particle, go in your well and you think it will be removed as fast as slug, it won't. If you have this in your flow line, you, this example show you, particle will lag behind. It will travel, but it, it won't be as quick as the slug. Okay, so liquid in the slug body moves slower, and we use the um, moving coordinate system. Okay, I put the moving observer in front of the slug, so moving observer will see everything move backward, correct? And moving observer will see the slug stay still. Slug doesn't move, and everything else move backward. Based on that. I can calculate the amount of time that the solid particle travel in the slug body. So moving observer will see the solid particle move backward inside the slug body. <coughs> that is the length of Ls, right? Okay. And it will move backward at the relative velocity of Vtb minus Vs. Okay. So by the way, this example is not in the exam. Okay. So they will, they will have the, it will appear to the observer that this solid particle will have this length, Ls, divided by the relative velocity, Vtb minus Vltb. That will be amount of time, right? Length divided by uh, velocity will be time, okay? And now that is the amount of time that is spent inside here. And the amount of time that is spent inside the film zone is the. So if we look at the moving observer, moving observer will see the particle move backward at the speed of what? Cassandra? What is the speed of particle moving backward? Observed by the moving observer inside the film. VTB minus VLTB. Because VLTB is a. Uh, liquid velocity in the field. Okay, so moving observer will see the particle move backward through the field at the speed of Vtb minus Vltb. And is move at the length of Lf. So length over velocity will be the amount of time. It will be Lf over Vtb minus Vltb, right? So that is the amount of time that the moving observer experience. Now the amount of time that moving observer experience and the amount of time that stationary observer experience is the same. 
Do you believe this? Yes. If I drop this object down, it takes, okay, let's say I move this, it takes two seconds. If, I, if you move, you still see the same thing, okay? It's not like, hey, if I move, this month will pass quicker or something. No, it's the same. So this means the amount of time experienced by moving observer is okay. It can be used, okay, in the calculation. So I use the amount of time experienced by the moving observer multiplied by the actual velocity of the particle that give me the distance. So last time you write this down, right? L net is the amount of distance traveled by the solid particle, this solid particle travel backward before the next lab hit it. So L net will be the amount of time that is spent inside the liquid slug multiplied by the velocity of the solid particle which is Vs when it stays inside the slug plus, so this is give us one length okay? this is a length travel forward when it stays inside the slug body and the next one length divided by delta V this is the amount of time that solid particle will stay in the film right? the amount of time that it spent spend in the film, multiplied by the velocity when it is in the film zone, this gives me the length forward distance that the particle move forward when it stay in the film. I add it together, it becomes the total distance that it moves forward. Question on this. Just fine, right? And it's never appeared in the exam anyway, so I don't worry about it anymore. But you understand, do you? Yes? Okay. So the next one, for the case where, number one, the liquid hole up in the slug body is 0.7. Okay, what does it mean? Liquid hole up in the slug body equal to 0.7. Look at this picture. You see this? This is a liquid hole up. This is a slug body. Okay. This part, it has some air in it. Okay. It's not just single phase water, it has some air inside, but the amount of air is just 30% by volume, and the amount of liquid is 70% by volume. So when I say liquid hole up in the slug body is 0.7, that means 70% by volume in that volume, in this part is liquid, okay? The liquid hole up in the film is 0.1. So this means this film, the amount of liquid by volume in the film part is 10%. Gas is 90%. So liquid hole up is part 1. Okay. The film length is 60 inches. The slug length is 30 inches. The total liquid hole up is the weighted average based on the length of each part. Okay. So how do I find the total liquid hole up? I do the weighted average based on the length of each part. So HL SU, HL is the liquid hole up of SU is slug unit. Okay, equal to HLLS, HL of liquid slug multiplied by slug length. Okay, HLLS is 0.7. Okay, multiplied by length of the slug, which is 30. Plus integration from zero to LF, HLTB DL, HLTB is um. Liquid hole up of in the film zone or telebubble zone, which is part one, right? It is part one. And if I assume that it's part one everywhere, it will be part one multiplied by the length. So I don't have to do integration. So I get point seven multiplied by thirty plus point one multiplied by the length, which is sixty, divided by everything add together, and I get point three. Good. This kind of thing can be done for the vertical flow too. So if I have slug flow in the well, I will have to know what is the slug length, what is the film length, what is the liquid hole up in the film zone, liquid hole up in the slug zone. Just those information, then I can get average liquid hole up. Okay? When I get average liquid hole up, especially in the well, I can get average density. Can I? What's the formula, Steven? 
statement or state? State. Statement. What is the formula? If I know liquid hold up, I know gas density, I know liquid density, what is the average density? That is in the exam. You know that, right? And the formula doesn't seem to be given. It's his turn. I know liquid hold up. Okay, I know gas density, liquid density. What is the average density? Yes, liquid hold up multiplied by liquid density plus gas density multiplied by 1 minus liquid hold up. That will be average density. After you get average density, then step you can do rho gh, right? Okay. If you do rho gh, that will be pressure drop when it's going up in that section. Okay. When you do rho multiplied by g multiplied by h, the unit that you will get is um, in SI is Pascal, in English is bow mass per foot per what second square, right? It is not PSI, okay? So you have to be able to convert it. We will talk about it a little bit more later. But so when, when you get the average liquid hole up, you can get average density. When you get average density, you can know what is the pressure drop on the well. So if you know the pressure on the top, you can back calculate the bottom of pressure like this. Is it going to be that accurate? No, it won't. You will be about like 80% accuracy. Another 20% will be from friction, okay? I didn't teach you how to calculate friction term, but you, at least you know 80%. The actual uh, pressure drop should be more than that because you have pressure drop due to loss in gravity and loss in friction, but this doesn't show you how to do friction. Are we done here? Yes? Shall we talk about exam? Okay. Exam. Uh, what is in the exam? I think I emailed you already that seven questions of true, false, or few in the blank part is something before the compressor. Compressor and after that is the rest of the exam. Okay. 113 point is compressor and after that and just seven point is come from the compressor uh, I have a question for Kai, Kai right? First Kai Yes yeah. So if you do the exam on true or false you didn't do 10 questions okay. the rest you did it correct what is the score that you get? Out of 120 If you didn't do it, you didn't do 10 questions, the rest you do it and it's correct. What do you get? What? 110. Did you cap 200? Yeah, we kept 200. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, another guy in the back, instead of not doing it, you decide to do it and it's wrong. 10 of them is wrong. And you do the rest correct, what do you get? You get 100, yes. And it's capped to 100, so it's 100. So let's say you did it wrong 20 points, just 20 points of the true or false part, or still in the bank part. You did it wrong 20 points, and the rest, you did it correct. What do you get the second try? Yeah, 80. Okay, 80. So part one has penalty. If you do it wrong, it's better to not do it, okay? Content of the exam, we start from 07, I think it's 07, uh, compressor, or 06, is it 06? L06, lesson 06, yes, that is um, what we start. Okay, there's a mistake in the, in, in the slide. Okay, mistake in the slide about parallel pump. If I put two pumps in parallel, 
we double the flow rate. Okay, if we put two centrifugal pump in series, we double the pressure. Okay, if you put reciprocating uh, uh, PD pump in series, most time you are going to break it. Don't do that because let's say one pump do like 10 gallon per minute, another pump do 10 point or five gallon per minute, okay? It's not exactly the same, right? So when pump, if you have the pump that do just 10 gallon per minute at the back, and 10 point or five gallon per minute at the front, the liquid going to the next pump is 10 point or five. That, but the liquid that going out is just 10. So you accumulate something, your, your pipe will break, okay? But you can put to centrifugal pump in series, okay? In the home world that you do, many people, not many people, some people ask me, where does that 3 mm CFD come from? It is the value that I give during the exam. I forget to put it on when I give the exam. So it, it was given during the exam time. Okay, what do you know, what do you need to know to do this exam? This exam is uh, difficult enough for someone who should graduate, okay? So if you should graduate, you will, you will pass. If you should stay, you, you will fail, okay? <laughs> so let's take a look at number six. This is a compressor. Um, do you know that CP is more than CV? But you don't. You don't care. Okay, you should know this. Uh, next, uh, mobile. Do you know about isobaric, isothermal, isentropic, isochoric? Yes. Okay. So you should be fine. What about polytropic exponent? What is that? That is n value, PV, and polytropic exponent equals zero, one, k infinity. You you know that right for each process. Okay. So this this graph. Oliviole, is that your name? Yeah. Okay. Do you know this graph? The relationship? Uh, maybe the question is not good. Let me ask you about this. At this point, between 3 and 4, this chart wow is open or closed? Open. Closed. Closed? Suction wow is open or closed? Open? Okay, I, I think you get it. Because from 3 to 4, I uh, pull it back, right? Pull the piston back. So section bar has to be open and this side bar has to be closed. Good? Uh, EV thing, you know that, right? Um, isothermal, adiabatic, all this. Irreversible, isothermal, reversible, adiabatic, actual thing. With cool, uncool, you know all this line. Do you? Okay. Next will be thermodynamic law. You should know all this. Okay. And this equation is given, but it's given in a different form. You have to know how to do the unit thing. Okay. Uh, Moiler diagram. Do you know how to spell Moiler? M O L L I E R. Please spell it correctly. Okay. Uh, that's just the chart. Okay. What about all this thing? Did we test you on that? Maybe. But what you need to know is, uh, Emma, can you convert from uh, flow rate in a pipe to be standard? Flow rate, MMSCFD. So if you know the actual flow rate in the pipe, can you calculate the standard flow rate? Yes, you can, and you should be fine. Uh, can you do erosional velocity calculation if the equation is given, Emma? Yes? Benedict, what about this graph? You know anything about this? That we need to have interstage cooler. If I don't tell you, you don't add it, probably you will do something very wrong, okay? 
And Benedict, do you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Yes? So let me answer this. Pressure or temperature at point B and temperature at point D. Which one is more, Benedict? Oh, it's about the same. About the same. So after cooling, will be cool, cooler, right? Less temperature. So I think it should be fine. What about this derivation? Is it in the exam? No, it won't. But you need to know what is the assumption used in this. It's the assumption used is isentropic horsepower, right? What is isentropic? Is it reversible adiabatic? Is it the same? Reversible adiabatic. Is, it, is that the same, Benedict? Yes. Yes? I don't remember. Okay, maybe. I think it's yes, too. I put it somewhere in this slide. Reversible adiabatic is the same as the... Uh, that's my reversible adiabatic. Okay. Isentropic compression is reversible adiabatic process. Mm -hmm. Alright. That is slide six. Slide seven. Um, do you know which one is? Okay, next is. Uh, Simon. Simon Ochoko. <coughs> Mister, do you know which one is the? Uh, so Simon, this screw compressor, okay, you see the screw compressor, it moved by rotating motion, right? Is it PD type or centrifugal type? PD, okay. What about this one? Is this a separable unit or integral unit? Separable or integral unit? What? Integral wrong. Minus one. <laughs> integral. <laughs> what about your turbocharger that you like? I, I, I think you like turbocharger. So this turbocharger is, is what? Is it PD or centrifugal? PD. PD. Okay, very good. Separable look like what? This is separable. Two throw, right? This one is four throw. What about the integral? You know the definition of stage, acting, and everything, right? Do you? High speed, okay, separable is this thing. Separable. Integral unit, integral recipro reciprocating compressor, look like this. Integral engine, look like this. Okay, this one is received, but it's integral. Okay. You may see this on one side, it has a V-shaped engine on the top. It looks like everything integrated, okay? So this one is integral unit, not separable, okay? Separable is another one. Low speed and high speed, you know which one use more maintenance, with what, which one use the heavy structure at the bottom, do you? Simon? Yes? Yes, yes please, please know that, okay? <laughs> When type compressor, uh, Karim, is that centrifugal or PD type? PD, very good. Helical load, PD. VRU, uh, centrifugal compressor, multi state compressor. Okay. I think you, by now you know all of that. Calculation, temperature thing. Last time, some couple people used PSIG. Okay, and you get some point. This time you use PSIG over there, I think I'll give you zero. I think I want to see you next semester, or next year, actually. <laughs> if we have 30 people fail, we, I can do summer, okay? But if less than 30 people, I think you'll see me spring off next year. <laughs> put PSI A, and if you put Fahrenheit over there, see me next year, okay? Put Röntgen, okay? Put Röntgen, okay? The formula, I think the unit is given too, right? In the in the front front head. okay. This equation, make sure that you know how to use it. Oh, whose calculator cannot do the iterative method for the friction factor calculation? Marina, can your calculator work? Yes. 
So if it ha you are allowed to have just one calculator, okay? Not two calculator, not three. That's one calculator. And that calculator make sure that it can do R cos, R cosine, and it can do that iterative method that we practice in the in in this together. That kind of question maybe or maybe not in the exam. I think it should. Uh, piston displacement. The equation is not given, and I don't don't think you should. You need to memorize this. If it appears inside, the equation will be given. Okay. Cylinder throughput drop pump. Nah. If it appears there, the equation will be given inside. Okay. This picture. This picture in particular. Option. What is this one? The square thing over there and have hole in it. What is that? What do you call it? Off chin. Regenerator. What? Cooler. Aerial cooler? Aerial cooler. Yes. Okay. What about this part? Off chin. What do you call it? Look like a separator. Scrubber. 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 Elect scrubber, right? And that is actual compression chamber. I hope you know all this. Okay. Yes. Uh, and this unit. I think I give you unit. Okay. Uh, and I did. Yes. Question. Are you considering the interval back to the, the interval or the like integrated compressor? Are you considering it basically like working the same camshaft? That would you consider to be? I don't. I don't hear. I'm sorry. Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you speak as loud as me, please? Back to the whole entire thing with like the integrated compressor. Like one. Integrated compressor. Yeah, are you considering anything integrated to be on the same camshaft or what? Integrated reciprocating compressor. Yeah, that's an infinite. So it's on the same, and that way you're considering that it's on the same shaft or what? It looks like this. Everything is on the, yeah. on the same shaft, yes. Right. Separable. You have you can separate it from the frame because it's on the side. When it looks like this, it's separable. Okay. When the engine V-shape is on the top, so when you go to the field trip, this this kind of thing, the engine is at the back, right? The engine is at the back. It looks like it looks like this, and the engine is at the back. The front part is not the engine is not on the top. This one is also separable, but it's just big, okay? High speed and it's just uh, separable. When the engine is on the top itself, okay, if it's kind of on the top, you cannot really separate it. We call it integral unit. Clear okay, now? So this gray picture, green picture, it, and this thing is integral engine compressor. Uh, let's talk about unit. Um, is next. How many? Yeah. So for <laughs> 500 barrel per day in 2 inch pipe, okay, this cost is 5 centipi, uh, a um, pi gravity is 40 or maybe 30. Can you calculate brain or number? Yes or no? Don't, no need to do the calculation, but just yeah. tell me yes or no. Yes. In the exam. Okay, I think you should pass. I hope that you can do it. <laughs> Alright, this number seven, number eight. Okay. John, can you convert from PSI to feed of liquid? Without this equation, because this equation is not given on the exam. You either have to memorize it, or you have to know how to do it. If you get rho g h, rho g h doesn't give you PSI. Rho g h gives me bar mass per foot per second square. It doesn't give me that. So I have to multiply by, I have to divide it by 144, multiply by density or something to, to do the unit conversion. Um, so next, next from you. What, what's your name? Hayden. Hayden? Do you know how to derive 2.31? Yeah. Four digit. 
on scientific notation. If I ask you to do scientific notation and have four digits after the decimal point, and you do just three digits, I I think I'm gonna give you maybe just half or something, okay? Or maybe three pi or ten, okay? Because I asked for four, and you don't do four. Okay, the pump. You know which one is the suction side, which one is the discharge side, right? Which one is outlet, inlet, hidden? Okay, very good. Uh, pump curve. Mm. NPSHA, okay, <coughs> next to headed, what's your name? Brian. Brian? What is the full name for NPSHA? Net positive suction head actual. Huh? Really what? Actual? Available. Minus one. <laughs> available. NPSHA, net positive suction head available. NPSHR, net, net positive suction head required. That, that put Okay, if you put the required without ED, I give you the point. If you say available, you get full point. But if you say, what do you say? Me? I, I said actual, actual, you get minus one. Okay, <laughs> not that matter. Uh, this equation is not given. Okay. Uh, if you have to do something like this, it will be given. But the problem with this thing is, you see the HVP, absolute vapor pressure of liquid, that has to come from Google. And I have to either do Google, Google it for you, or you have to Google during the exam, but you're not allowed to use Google, okay? <laughs> All right. But this time, you need to know how to substitute the value from this into this kind of equation. Can you? P1 HS something to calculate available. I think there's another equation. This equation. This equation is not given either, but it's very similar to mechanical energy balance, right? Mechanical energy balance will be more than this. Okay? So it's basically it's just the same. Okay? What else? Has it been there? Uh, how's it really and who, who wants to answer this? The Miller, where is this hazard William equation developed from? Is it from water or from oil forecast? Water. Water, <coughs> correct. We don't use it. The equation is not given. Okay, the formula is not given. Reno number 7741, you can get it, right? Or I think there's another one. Six point something. Uh, what is this? Six point seven one nine six two times ten to the power minus four. Can you get this vector? This value. You know how to do it? Yes. Okay. I'll check on you later. So this unit, unit conversion. It can be on the exam, okay? Like if I ask you, um, calculate Vs L, okay, 500 barrel per day in two inch pipe, give you density viscosity, you calculate Vs L. Can you do it? How do you do it, Victor? Or let's, let me call someone who's closer to me. Uh, send it, 500 barrel per day, okay? And you know viscosity density. How do you calculate VSL? Superficial liquid flow rate. Uh, superficial liquid velocity. I mean VSL. So QA, yes. So 500 barrel. You have to convert from. Typically, you have to multiply by B B O, but B O is not given, and I didn't discuss it to you because there's a fair chain, right? In the pipe, it at a certain pressure and temperature. When it come out, there's a phase change. Gas come out from the liquid phase, so the liquid amount become less and less and less, right? When it reach the the surface condition. But for for this class, you may just assume it's the same. 
in reservoir class, I think you need B sub O. Okay. So for this class, you have to calculate from convert from barrier per day into either cubic foot per second and divided by area, which is in the unit of square foot, or convert everything in meter, cubic meter per second, and divided by area, which is uh, meter, okay, of cross section area. Superficial velocity is the flow rate divided by area of the pipe. Okay. Uh, I think I have more questions. Anybody do you think? Okay. If I have three layers, okay, oil is in the middle. Bottom part is water, this part is oil, the top part is gas. I know my oil flow rate. Okay. Can you calculate the superficial velocity for oil? Uh, Rohan, yes? Yes or no? Not a problem. So if I have a, if I give you the area of this whole thing, you can do it, right? If I give the whole area. So cross section area occupied by oil, and you can calculate actual velocity, and you can calculate superficial velocity. Okay? But if I don't give you the area, I tell you the height, and then the height, you have to use your calculator and use the geometry relationship to calculate the area. Good? The Geometric relationship is given. Uh, next is number nine. Number nine. Yes. Not for three phase four. Right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be used. It's not far, but it can be used without any problem. Look at this. Geometric relationship that you have that is given in the exam look like this. <coughs> so if you really understand it, you can do it. So first, you know the height of oil from the bottom, you can calculate the area of gas, right? You flip it, you know the length from the or uh, maybe from the bottom to layer of water, water oil interface, then you can calculate area of water too, right? So, and you know the total area, pi d square over 4, you can get the area of the oil strip. Volumetric flow rate divided by area of that oil strip will give me the actual velocity. You can do it, can you? Not a problem, right? You're very good already. The test cannot be identical to whatever I teach you. Otherwise, you can't really test if you know it or not. It will be different. It will be unseen. And then you have Maybe one equation unseen, the problem one is like seen, problem one is seen, problem two is unseen, problem three is unseen, un problem four is unseen or something. Most of the stuff is unseen. It's, you never seen it before. I just make it. It's not the same as last year exam. Okay? It, it, it's easy. At least for me, okay, it's easy. <laughs> yes. It's not a waste of time. If you cannot do the old exam, you cannot do this exam for sure. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's a waste of time. I mean, you should be, you should try the exam. If you don't do, if you cannot do the old exam, I think you have problem with this exam. But if you can do the old exam, it doesn't mean that you will not any problem have any problem with this exam. Okay. Liquid pipeline. Two F over V square over D. You memorize that. You know how to use the calculator. Do the iterative process. You know how to put it in the number of, in the scientific format and with the requirement of the uh, number of digits, okay? Gas flow, variable equation. All this, is this equation or oh, derivation for gas? You see that there's a derivation for gas. 
Oh, I think I skipped the metering. There's a metering part. Yes. Metering. Okay. Metering. There's only one equation in metering. Okay. That equation is. What is it? Uh, maybe that's too difficult to memorize. But we have this equation. There's only one equation. Q equal to C prime square root H W P sub F. So Q H is S C H. SCFH, P sub F is PSI A, okay. HW is inner border, should be between 20 and 80, or maybe from 0 to 100, but preferably, pre preferable to be at the middle. So P sub F is PSI A, C prime, or if it flow constant, if I give it to you, if I give you or if it flow constant, I give you the pressure drop, HW, I give you P sub F. And you cannot do it because the equation is not given. Don't ask me for the equation. Okay. Because we will have only one equation, that equation. The rest may be. I cannot ask you to memorize this, okay? This equation. It's too long, it's too much. But I can ask you to memorize this. Will you please do that? It may not appear over there, but if it is, you should be able to do it. Should you not? That's the only equation that we have. This picture, I think it's up here in the. Vena contractor, did you memorize how to spell that yet? V E N A something? You do that? Robert, Roberto, did you do that? Yeah. How to spell Vena contractor? And it is over there. French tab, pipe tab, all those things. And senior fitting, and we have junior fitting. The difference between senior fitting and senior fitting, we can flow it during the change. Junior fitting, we have to stop the flow before we change. Okay? Senior fitting, we can keep it flowing and we change it at the same time. So metering, you need to know um, positive displacement time. Okay? AO Smith is positive displacement time. Okay? This meter. Uh, what is we have? Gas meter. Oh, Cor Coriolis flow meter. You know Coriolis flow meter? How does it work? You know that, right? So if I give you this picture, do you know the name? Okay. No. I don't read it, okay. You're okay. fine. Ruben Stanley Smith. Last name is Smith. Yeah. Last name is Smith. This meter is um, positive displacement type. Meter has to be positive displacement type, right? For accuracy. This one is counting the actual volume that's going in and going out. Uh, Orphic meter is not displa uh, uh, positive displacement type. Look at the sharp edge. Sharp edge fares toward the upstream. You know this, right? There are not many things to memorize. Okay. Flow straightener or conditioner. So put it over there and it like 30 diameter before change of orifice CD with the distance from the disturbance. So if you have 35 diameter ahead of it or 45 degree of five diameter, this may be for, for the design. Now okay? oh, I have to talk about the design thing so. So question, question, question. Who wants who want to answer? Next to Roberto Taylor Cooper, but he asked some question already. Okay, next Matt? Matt, right? Matthew. Matthew. If I tell you, mass flow rate in power per minute of gas. I tell you, gas composition in weight percent. Okay. I don't tell you the specific gravity of gas, but I tell you mass composition in weight percent. Can you calculate MMSCFD? Oh. Yes? Are you sure? Okay. You should be able. So if I tell you mass for it, so if you don't know that, so who, who maybe some of you fail like compos uh, specific gravity calculation thing. When I ask you, okay, change from mass percent to volume percent. This time that kind of question is not repeated. But you have to know it. Why? Because if I give you just Look at the gas equation, okay, next next one is gas equation. Uh, 11, let's say 11. 
Okay. Grand Mode Equation, did I give Grand Mode Equation in the exam? Front page? Yes? I still don't know, I don't think I have it. I have Panhandle A, Panhandle B, Grand Mode Equation. Look at Grand Mode Equation. You see that gamma? Gamma is over there. I don't give you gamma, I give you composition. So if I give you composition in the volume percentage, how do you get the average molecular weight? You do weighted average based on the, the molecular weight of each component, right? So if you don't know how to do that, you don't have the right camera in over there, and this is just plug and chuck, and you cannot do it, you can zero. Okay? If it is there. It may not be there, but if it is there, you should be able to do it. Okay? Gamma, how do you calculate gamma? Get the, from the composition. If I give you the weight percent, you have to divide it by molecular weight to get the more percent, normalize it to get the more percent. If I give you the more percent already, you just do weighted average based on the more percent. Easy enough. Okay. The derivation. I know you, you should know that the derivation is long. It won't be in the exam. I just cannot put it there. Okay. However, the final form, okay, I may tell you, hey, look, this equation comes from the derivation. What is the assumption used in this derivation? What's that? What is the assumption? Mr. Weight, Rice Weight. What is the assumption that we used? Isotope. Okay, very good. I may not ask that, okay, but if I ask that, should be able to do it. Z value. So if you do the variable equation, you need average Z value. It just plug the value in. And if you ever put, I think the equation, is this equation given on the front page? Yes? Yes. yes. And I tell you that you need two, right? And if I tell, I tell PSIA, right? And if you ever put PSIG, I just give you zero because you cannot just follow the simple instruction, okay? It's very easy already. Hey, here's the equation, put the value in there, get the answer. If you cannot do that, I, I want to train you better than that. Maybe next year, okay? Try, try to do it better. P bar, average by that way, okay? And everything has to be absolute pressure. Less than 100, you use that. Okay, that's the most equation. Panhandle A, I didn't give it because most of the time you use panhandle B. And okay, all the fan equation, P vacuum to 100 PSI A. That's all the fan equation. It gives a good result when pressure less than 35 PSI G and gamma is about 0.75. Okay. Split gas is for less than 1 PSI G at 60 F. It will be accurate. So if you have flow in the facility, the pressure is 20. It's not less than 1 PSIG, right? So you don't use split class. You use only fan equation. O L I P H A N T. Do you know how to spell that? Split class, you know how to spell that because there's no multiple choice. You just have to fill the blank. Yes, question. Which, which equation? <coughs> average pressure has to be that, less than 100 PSI, yes. If you pressure is higher than 100, use Vermouth. Use equation. Vermouth equation, smaller diameter, less than 12 inch, short run pipe in the facility. Okay. Uh, general recommendation is use both. Select whichever higher pressure drop. Okay. In the exam, you use this one because use both may take too much time. There could be the problem about gas pressure drop calculation, and you just use one. What did we learn in this class? We learned pressure drop. Pressure drop for gas pipe, pressure drop for liquid pipe, pressure drop for two phase flow, metering. 
and some pump, horsepower for pump, horsepower for compressor. That's it. Right? Very easy. Just just those. Okay. And Moody friction factor, Fanning friction factor. You can do successive method by now, right? From that Cobalt Bry equation, you did it a couple times already. So it could have appear in the exam. If it is, and you cannot do it, you just get zero. Parallel series loop pipe. 